Ladesh. Now, the paragraphs are in, that are in this white, they will be telling us the main idea. So we will be reading this first. So let's begin. In Bangladesh, students can miss months of school during monsoon season when heavy rains cause floods. Even when schools are open, it can be impossible for kids to get to them. Climate change is making the flooding even more extreme by melting glaciers in the Himalaya mountains. The runoff swells rivers and makes them overflow their banks. The floods damage farms, schools, and other buildings. In the past few years, thousands of schools have been damaged and hundreds have been destroyed completely. So what was this page mostly about? Page 8 talks about how there's lots of rain and lots of schools have been destroyed. So we're going to continue reading to answer the question, why is it hard for children in Bangladesh to go to school? Now, monsoon season is a time of year where there is a lot of rain. So why do students miss months of school? Well, there's lots of floods and students can't get to the school. Now remember, a flood is a strong flow of water that fills the land. So what do the floods do to the schools? They destroy them. So remember today, we're trying to answer the questions, why is it hard for children in the region, the Chalan Bell region of Bangladesh to go to school and how is the problem solved? So we already learned on page eight why it's hard. Why is it hard for children to get to school? And it's because floods have destroyed schools and made it hard for them to get to school. So now we're going to read on to find out how the problem is solved. So let's look at page nine. Along. Whoops. Unsinkable schools. After seeing many of his friends and family members in Bangladesh miss out on an education, an architect named Mohammed Rezwan decided that he was not going to let floods stop any more children from getting to school. He figured that the best way to beat the rising waters is to rise with them on a boat. I thought that if the children cannot come to schools, then the school should come to them, he explains. He raised enough money to open the first boat school in 2002. That was about 18 years ago. Now there are 90 boats that travel along 250 kilometer or 155 mile stretch of rivers and streams in northwestern Bangladesh, giving thousands of children a chance to learn. What was this section mostly about? It's about how a man um, decides to make boat schools to help the children. Let's keep reading. Ahoy, whoops, ahoy classmates. Boat school is a combination of a school bus and schoolhouse, says Muhammad. Six days a week, each boat stops at different villages along the shore, picking up children who are mostly in the same grade. When the classroom is full, about 30 to 35 students, the work begins. For three hours, the students have lessons in math, reading, writing, English, Bengali, the environment, and conservation. Then the boat returns all the students to their riverbank stops. From there, the boat moves on to pick another set of students for another three-hour lesson. Each boat offers three sets of lessons a day. The shore is the part of land that is closest to the river. So where my mouse is moving in the bottom, that is the shore. Now, how does this boat school work? Well, it picks up students on land and it moves as it picks up students. Now, Bengali is the language spoken in Bangladesh. What kinds of things do the students learn in boat school? 
So we can go back in the passage and read that for three hours, the students have lessons in math, reading, writing, English, Bengali, which is their um, language, the environment, and conservation. Let's keep reading. Wireless waves. Even though the boats float from place to place, they have electricity to run up to four computers, a printer, a DVD player, and a CD player. Solar panels on the roofs provide all the electricity they need. The boats are connected to the internet through wireless technology. Besides all the modern technology, the boats also stock hundreds of books. What do the solar panels do? They get electricity from the sun. And what can students use because of the electricity from solar panels? They can use computers, a printer, and a DVD player. So what is the solution? How are the children in Chalambil region, Bangladesh, able to go to school? So good readers go back in the passage to try to answer the question. So I'm going to go, whoops, I'm going to go back to page nine and reread it. And while I'm reading it again, I want you to think about the solution. How are they solving their problem? After seeing many of his friends and family members in Bangladesh miss out on an education, an architect named Mohammed Rezwan decided he was not going to let floods stop any more children from getting to school. He figured that the best way to beat the rising waters is to rise with them on a boat. I thought that if the children cannot come to the school, then the school should come to them, he explains. He raised enough money to open the first boat school in 2002. Now there are 90 boats that travel along 250 kilometers, which is 155 miles, stretch of rivers and streams in northwestern Bangladesh, giving thousands of kids a chance to learn. Ahoy, classmates. Boat school is a combination of a school bus and schoolhouse, says Muhammad. Six days a week, each boat stops at different villages along the shore, picking up children who are mostly in the same grade. When the classroom is full, about 30 to 35 students, the work begins. For three hours, the students have lessons in math, reading, writing, English, Bengali, the environment, and conservation. Then the boat returns all the students to the riverbank stops. From there, the boat moves on to pick up another set of students for another three-hour lesson. Each boat offers three sets of lessons a day. So what is the solution? How are they able to um, help the children in the Chanambil region, Bangladesh, go to school? Now I'm going to read the captions that go along with their pictures. Captions um, tell us more about the pictures. So your job is to listen closely and figure out why this school is important to the community in the Chalambal Beal region so that we can record this information in our note catchers, which you won't do that. Um, so here's a picture of these students. They're holding their books. Let's read this caption. Fact, all the school boats are built locally using materials found in the region. Many have flat, flat bottoms so they can glide through shallow waters and over flooded land. Let's look at this picture. In the evenings, the boats also act as community centers, giving adults a chance to learn about things like health care and new rice farming methods. Look at this picture of the students getting off of the boat to the shore. All aboard. If it weren't for the boats coming to pick up the children of, at their doorsteps, many young girls might not be going to school at all. Their parents wouldn't let them travel out of the village to the nearest government school because they believe the journey is dangerous. Also, it takes them away from their chores for too long. Now that the boat schools come to get them, the girls have time to both learn and work.